Today we're going to be talking about how to program an Arduino, the Atmega328 chip that's found on an Uno, not through the USB as normally done, but through the ICSP header. And we're going to hook up a PIC kit 4 to make that happen. Now normally there's a little chip beside the USB that talks to the Atmega328 through this little junction right here. And we're going to cut the line in between those two pads to stop the reset signal to go from one chip to the other at the purple location right there on the, on the schematic. Now, before we get around to doing that, we're going to have to test that the uh, pads are connected. So we're going to use a multimeter to do that. And that's how you do it. So next what we're going to do is we're going to cut that trace between those two pads using an X-Acto knife. So I've got it sitting on the multimeter right here and I've got my X-Acto knife. There I'm going to pull back on the X-Acto knife cutting a little groove between those two pads and it's going to cut the copper trace that's found in between those two pads. So I do it a couple of times like that. It makes a little bit of dust. So I'm going to blow that off. I'm going to rub it off and then I'm going to blow it. Just make sure there's nothing left of the copper on there. And now I'm going to test it again with the multimeter. So I'm going to take the two probes on my multimeter and I'm going to tap them into the pads and make sure... Well, I'm going to test it first without touching the pads. And now I'm going to test it on here. Yeah. Contact and deconnect and contact again just to make sure that I got a good connection and it turns out it's been cut properly. All right, next up we're going to hook up the PIC kit 4 to the Atmega328 board, uh, the Arduino. And we're going to do it through the ICSP header. So I'm going to take six wires and I'm going to take these six wires and I'm going to hook them up first to the ICSP header, starting with the red line, which is the VCC. And then um, from there, I'm going to go and connect up Mosey and then ground. So red, purple, and then black. In your case, you might have different colors. These are the colors that I'm using right here. What's important isn't the colors themselves, but being consistent between the ICSP header and the picket for the snap or whatever program you're using. So in this case, I've got VCC, then Mosey, then ground. And then I'm going to hook up Let's see, this one is the meso line, then the SCK, the clock line, and then reset. So these are the six pins that I'm hooking up. So now it's going to be the turn of going over to the uh, picket four. So I'm going to bring that over and I'm going to bring my wires over to it. It's important to point out that the triangle refers to pin number one. So pin number one is that not actually hooked up in this particular setup. We're going to start with pin number two, and that'll be red or VCC, and then ground, so it's black, and then meso, and then the clock, SCK, then reset, then mosey, and then pin eight has no connection either. So we're only hooking up six of the eight slots on the pick kit for and it's the same thing for the snap programmer which also has eight and this is different than the pick kit three which only had six in the past and so here you can see that we've hooked up the ICSP and the pick kit so now we're going to power it up with a USB on each of these so I'm using a, a big USB connector right here this sort of USB connector you see on printers I'm hooking that up to the Arduino and that's just for power and I'm going to connect up micro USB to the PIC kit 4 and that's what we're going to be using for programming. So the USB on the Arduino is for power and the USB on the PIC kit is for programming. So next up I'm going to hook up my PIC kit and the Arduino to MPLAB X running on a Mac but this could work under Linux or Windows as well. So I'm going to fire up MPLAB X like this. And I'm going to start a new project. And I'll choose the Atmega 328P, which is the chip that we have on the board. And I'll choose my PIC kit by choosing its serial number there in the menu. And XC32, the latest version of the compiler that's already been installed. I name my project like this. And then I wait. And then I will insert a C main file. So I go into sources, I right click, and I choose other and C, and then C main. 
I just choose the default name, but you can name the file differently. It gives you a template right here. You got to change the template here to, to make it compile. So um, I put a void inside the arguments for main. I put a little uh, assembler command right in there. Make sure that I include xc.h and compile. Next up, we're going to pull the program off of the Atmega328 chip that's on the Arduino Uno. And so it's an Atmega328P. And uh, in this process, we're going to have to take a look at the project settings. So that's the wrench icon over here. And you can see it's got a configuration for the Picket 4 as well as the chip and the compiler. But right now we're going to pull the, the data. We're going to read the device memory using the icon I just clicked on up at the top of MPLabX. It connects to the programmer. And then it's going to complain that it's in the wrong debug mode or the wrong connection mode. We want to switch from ISP to debug wire. And that we also have to toggle the power. So that means pulling the USB cable out of the Arduino and plugging it back in. So we do that and it has now read it. And we're going to save that file as a hex file like this. And it goes into the project folder that we have for our existing MPLabX project. And we save that. Now we're going to do that again, but this time we're going to read the EE or flash memory. It's basically the same process. It'll pull the data off of the chip. So there's two sections of memory that we were interested in. And it's now pulled it off, or just about pulled off. And we're going to save that file as well. I like to name it just so that if I have to restore the chip later, um, I know what that file was. And, and it's because the, the internal contents of the files are, are a little complicated right there, but you can see that as it was written. All right, next up, we're going to read the configuration bits. And, and that uh, sets up the chip. And we're going to read it uh, using, uh, we can look at target memory view and then configuration bits right there. And so we're going to pull it off using that little icon right there at the bottom of the screen. And then we're going to see that there's an issue. It's having trouble pulling the data off. That's because we're going to have to switch to a different mode. We're back to ISP. So there's these two modes, ISP and debug wire. We are currently in debug wire and we want to go over to ISP mode. Okay, so I tried again, it didn't work. We're going to have to make that switch. So how do we do it? Well, we go back into project properties, that wrench icon right there. And we go into the pick kit for, we select communication and we switch over to ISP. So in the IDE and MPLAB X, we're now asking to be in ISP mode. But we'll also have to configure the hardware, the pick kit for to be in ISP mode and to make the chip on the Arduino ISP mode. So we say yes here. and it pulls it off. The read's complete. And next what we do is we say generate source code to output. So this will allow us to have the configuration bits settings set in our C code right here. Next up, let's program the chip. So we've backed up the data that was on the chip. Now let's write a program and download it into the, uh, into the board. So I've compiled it using the hammer icon. So that's good. So my program does compile. Fantastic. Let's go to the debugger now, or the debugger icon, that one right there, and send the data into the chip. And we're going to run into an issue because currently the chip is in ISP mode, which doesn't allow us to debug with it. So we need to switch over to debug wire. So we go to the project properties, we select the pick kit for communication and switch over to debug wire. So MPLAB X is now ready for debug wire. Now we have to make sure that the chip is in debug wire mode. So we're going to get prompted here after we hit the debug icon again, we'll get prompted to make the switch. So we say yes here, and then we're going to be asked to toggle power. So we pull the USB cable out of the Arduino and we plug it back in and we continue along.
and we pause it because I made a mistake with the breakpoint. I should have put the breakpoint for this particular chip uh, at the, uh, the first line that said main right there. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to debug one more time. And this time it should halt on that first breakpoint. There we go. It's halted. So I'm just going to make sure that uh, we can see target memory view, make sure that uh, we've halted in the right place. So go back into window and uh, target memory view. I'm going to look at the program memory right there and we can see it's halted in this uh, assembly listing right here. We're all good to go. All right. Good luck, everyone. Mm -hmm.